Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about help. I am a nurse wanting to leave the bedside. Is medical coding the right choice for me? Which certification should I pursue? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I got this comment. I'm gonna read the comment and then we're gonna get into it. So, here we go, all right. The viewer says, I am an LVN and need to get out of the nursing home. I feel like the best route would be to go with the CPC. Would you agree with that? Yes and no. <laughs> okay, let me explain a few things first. CPC, if you don't know, is a certified professional coder, and that is a medical coding credential uh, for the outpatient side with the American Academy of Professional Coders. All right, that's out of the way first. Um, moving on. <laughs> Yes and no in the fact that if you want to be a medical coder, yes, I think that's great. If you are coming from that nursing side and you want to go ahead and switch fields, a lot of people have different reasons for switching fields from nursing into medical coding because sometimes like they get into the field and they're like, this is not what I expected, this is not what I thought, but I still have all of this knowledge. Where can I use it? Medical coding is a great uh, alternative field for that knowledge. The other thing is sometimes nurses want to get back into working after retiring. Medical coding is another great um, alternative after you've retired and you don't want to stop working and you want to continue to work. Um, lots of people do that. So if that, whatever your reasoning, if you are a nurse and you want to go ahead and switch over, whatever your reasoning, it is uh, everybody's done it. <laughs> everybody's had their reasons for doing this as well. Um, the other thing is this that I will say. When it comes to what you think that you know about coding, you really have to throw it out because you're going to start from a clean slate. Everybody starts with a clean slate, no matter what you think you know. Because a lot of times when nurses tell me, oh yeah, Blue, no, no, I do coding. This should be an easy thing for me. What we do is we circle from the super bill and that's how we code. No, no, no. Coding in the traditional sense is that you're going to be taking the notes or the records and you're going to be looking at them. You're going to be translating these documents into codes. Now, yes, sometimes the codes have already been selected and you're just sort of auditing and going through to make sure that everything is okay and that it's to its highest level of specificity and if it's not then you go in and you change the code to whatever fits for that documentation but um, again it's not circling from a super bill it is not just seeing the codes that are already selected and just passing them on through it is literally going through using critical thinking and making sure that everything is there like it's supposed to be so everybody starts from ground zero everybody regardless of your educational background. I know because I have uh, tutored many a student <laughs> who have advanced degrees in other fields, but when it comes to medical coding, it's just like, what is this? It does take time to understand. It takes a lot of commitment uh, to studying, which I know that nurses are no stranger to, obviously, because these things are difficult. However, to speak in nurse terms, I have heard <laughs> uh, that people have compared the medical coding certification exams to the NCLEX and they said that the NCLEX was actually easier. Okay, so if that gives you any kind of indication on the toughness of these exams that should prepare you. This is not meant to scare you and I'm not trying to call anybody out for their intelligence level at all. I'm just trying to get you all to be prepared because some nurses will go in thinking that this is the easiest thing in the world. And then when they get into it, they're just like, oh my gosh, what did I get into? This is what you're going to have to be prepared for. Now, when you go to a school, when you're picking out a trade school, if you want to go to a trade school, if you want to go to your local college medical coding, medical billing and coding prep program, uh, you could totally do that. I have said numerous times on my channel that the only two places that I can truly recommend would be going through the associations themselves. You could pick the American Academy of Professional Coders or you could pick the American Health Information Management Association. 
both of them have their own online medical coding programs. And when it comes to Ahima, theirs is a little weird to get to. You have to go to the Ahima store in order to find it because a lot of people will go to ahima.org and be completely lost. You have to go into the upper right and you will see the Ahima store. You click there and then that's when you'll see the options for like outpatient and inpatient uh, prep programs and things like that. So you can go through either one of those. Um, it's going to be roughly $5,000 depending on which one you go to, give or take, okay? That's about what it's running because with Ahima, they charge for their books separately from the cost of the program. So don't let the cost of the program fool you. There's other costs to be added on. And with AAPC, sometimes they have like specials. They have specials all the time. And they have like, sometimes they have bundle deals and things like that. So you really have to look. But I will say that if you choose either path, be prepared to again, learn on your own because I have heard from people who have taken the AAPC instructor-led uh, version of the class and they said that their instructor was not helpful and then some people have said that their instructor was very helpful. So I think it really all depends on who your instructor is, if they're going to be helpful to you or not. So again, it's a chance you take when you do an online school, all right? There's also the other alternative, which is the independent study. I have come up with an independent study syllabus and it is the link to that video is in every single one of my videos and it's got the whole breakdown. It's got the times um, that you should be roughly through those sections um, going through medical terminology, anatomy, patho. If you don't want to go through that as a nurse, you say, well, Blue, I'm, I'm still good on that. You can skip all of that, okay? You can go right into the um, medical law and ethics. You can go into, you know, all those other things. And then you can go to um, your, your diagnosis coding, your procedure coding, and that kind of thing. That you can start from there because you know all of those foundational things like <laughs> medical terminology, anatomy, and patho, and pharma. Okay, you know all of those things. Now, again, going over those sections just a diagnosis coding, medical law and ethics, and those kinds of things, you still wanna make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to go over that stuff. Um, you can purchase the books. Uh, like I said, they're all on the independent study list. Um, it's the workbooks, it's the books that I recommend. Everybody knows if you've watched my channel for more than five minutes, uh, you know that I love Optum coding books, okay? Um, the link to Optum is in the description box below as well. They have fantastic deals all the time, and I even put on there how you can find those fantastic deals. There is no promo code that I have. It is all there um, in the description box. Just follow the directions, and you'll be able to find the deal on the books. Uh, but if you choose to do it this way, again, you want to make sure that you follow the independent study timetable, and you know that'll put you about six months to learn all of what you need to learn. Uh, if you've already gotten all of that stuff. I always say it's great to take nine months, 12 months, or 18 months, but seeing as how nurses have that foundational knowledge already, um, it's not gonna take them quite as long, but I still think you still need to take time to do it. You know, So if you wanna take nine months, even if you take eight months, it's still okay. Um, obviously the independent study is gonna be a lot cheaper uh, and it's gonna be the same things that you would learn if you were going through either one of them, okay? It's just, you're just getting the books at a discounted rate, obviously, and you're going through it on your own. And it really is all about practicing. You know, a lot of people think that there's just these other methods that you can do and circling and highlighting and tabbing. You don't need to do all that garbage. You don't, because when you're studying, you just need to be you and the book and taking the time to practice in your book. You don't need to write in the manuals. If you wanna write in the workbooks, totally, because that's what workbooks are for. <laughs> These uh, medical coding manuals are reference tools, and the cleaner they are, the better they are, especially when you're going into the exam room and you're gonna be looking at your codes and you don't wanna be having all this kerfuffle all over your pages because you thought you needed to know that stuff. You probably don't because you don't have time to read notes in your books when you are in the exam room. 
Now I will say this, the person specifically asked about the CPC. If you're a nurse, you can pick whichever credential you want to. The CPC, which is a, the outpatient medical coding certification from the American Academy of Professional Coders, I will say this first before I go into the other ones. The CPC will require you to have membership with AAPC every single year that you hold the CPC. Now I've seen um, some nurses still have the CPC A, the apprentice status, because whatever they said that they did, they didn't have any coding experience. So they have to wait the two years um, until like when you're working as a coder, you have two years in order to hold on to that apprentice status. And then after that, you can be a full fledged CPC. If you go through an approved AAPC program and then you uh, work it that way, they'll have you go through Practicode, which will take one year off. And then if you're going through their approved program, that'll take the other year off. And so then when you finish Practicode, you'll be a full fledged CPC. It's a little bit more expensive that way, but it's entirely up to you if you want to do it like that. But I'm just saying there's alternatives to CPC. And even if the program that you are going through is saying, oh, we, we prepare you for the CPC, you don't have to be pigeonholed into that's your only choice because it can prepare you also for that CCSP, which is a certified uh, coding specialist physician based. <laughs> um, when you take that one, it is, these are both outpatient credentials, but with the CCSP, uh, this is the American Health Information Management Association, another association. This is their outpatient medical coding certification only. So the CCSP and the CPC are both covering ICD-10-CM, your diagnosis coding, uh, CPT, current procedural terminology and Hicks picks. Okay. So you have your choice. The difference is with AAPC, of course, you have to have these, the, you're going to have the apprentice status. You're going to have those fees every single year uh, for their membership. And then you're going to have, it's $205 every single year. Okay. And then you have to have 36 continuing education units in order to maintain that credential. You have two years, of course, to make those 36 continuing education units, but it's it's up to you. With the American Health Information Management Association and that CCSP, you only need 20 for that one, okay? If you have one medical coding certification with a HEMA, your CEU total that you need to come up with is 20, all right? So they do not require you, a HEMA, the American Health Information Management Association, does not require you to be a member, but they will charge you to report your CEUs a separate fee. It's not that bad. It's certainly not $205 times two, okay? <laughs> um, but it, they, they will charge you because that's their administrative fee and that kind of thing. So if you want to do it that way, if you want to get the membership, membership is still a really good deal, I think, and you still get CEUs that are included with your membership. AAPC does that as well. Um, but you get those, um, uh, CEUs included, right? Like I was saying, and then depending on which package you get, cause they have the standard membership and the premier membership, obviously the premier membership is going to give you more CEUs. I believe it's eight and with the standard is just four, but still, I mean, it adds up. So it's your choice, whichever one you want to. Now you may have heard about the CCA or the CCS. And these are both with the American Health Information Management Association. Now with these, right, you can pick either one, but the CCA is a certified coding associate. This is, this says it's your entry level. This is the shortest exam, uh, shortest in time, meaning that it is only two hours <laughs> that they give you to take uh, the CCA, but these two hours pack a punch. And this particular exam tests you on the most domains of any of the four main medical coding certifications that employers are asking for, the CPC, the CCS, CCA, or the CCSP. Any one of these, this is the, the one with the, the shortest amount of time, but the most domains, and it's covering uh, inpatient and outpatient coding. Again, this the CCA says that you have the entry-level competence to be able to code either one of those settings. So this means 
that it will give you more opportunities to apply at different places, right? You can apply for inpatient coding or you can apply for outpatient coding, right? Either one of these, if you have the CCA or the CCS. Now the CCS is the mastery medical coding certification, meaning that if you get this CCS, if you pass it, then you're good to go. You need no other medical coding certifications because when you're looking at the job listings, you will see that the majority of the people are asking for the CCS. They are asking for the CCS again, because it is the mastery of the inpatient and the outpatient coding settings. So if you want to go pursue that one, by all means, lots of nurses do. It is a four hour exam. All right. Um, so that's just what you got to know. The rest of them, the, the CCS, the CCSP and the CPC are all four hour exams. So just something that you got to know. They are all difficult in their own way. But the hardest exam, and I'm not saying this so that y'all can be discouraged and not pursue that one because you think it's too hard. Lots of people pass it on their first try, but they study. Uh, the hardest one is the CCS. That is the hardest exam to pass. They are all difficult to pass in their own way. And if you have heard that, oh, uh, everybody says, oh, well, the CPC is really easy. No, it's not. I have tutored many nurses who have failed the CPC and not just once they've failed it quite a few times and it's different reasons guys it really is sometimes people go in there with the expectation that I'm a nurse this should be easy for me and I've done the coding this whole time this should be no big deal and then when they get into the exam room they're like panicking because oh my gosh I didn't know it was all of these things and they didn't study and then when they try to run back at it again, they fail again because, you know, now they're going too slow. So it's all about timing and it's all about knowledge. So there's a lot of things that go into the preparation. This is why I tell you guys, nine months, 12 months, or 18 months to study medical billing and coding would really serve you well, rather than trying to rush through, even though you don't have to, you know, really study all of the other medical terminology and anatomy stuff because you already know it. A refresher doesn't hurt. I will say that a refresher does not hurt. Now, if you're asking me which one should you go through, it is entirely up to you. Again, if you want to just be on the outpatient side and you don't want to have to pay a membership fee every single year and you don't want an apprentice status, an apprentice status tells the world that you have less than two years of experience. The American Health Information Management Association credentials, none of them have apprentice status on them. The apprentice status is an AAPC thing, okay? That is their, is part of their business model. Now I will say this also, AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coders is a for-profit business. The uh, American Health Information Management Association is a non-profit business. So the business models are going to be way different and what they push and, and the things that they highlight on their um, websites are going to be different. All right. And the nonsense about, oh, well, AHIMA is for the hospital and AAPC is more for the outpatient side. So you need to go with AAPC. It's nonsense because I hold um, the American Health Information Management Association, the CCS and the CCSP credentials. And I work in a hospital. I have always worked in a hospital or for a hospital. Now, I don't do inpatient coding, but the hospital does have outpatient clinics. So that's where I have been coding. So again, you can code anywhere. I mean, depending on wherever you want to go. If you have the um, CCS or the CCA, you will be able to code anywhere. And you can apply for any position that you want to. Granted that you feel comfortable coding with that um, ICD-10 PCS book, you know, so it really all depends on you. But if you're just comfortable with that outpatient side and that CPT book, um, and you're hearing me say these two separately, because once you get into studying and you start to study the ICD-10 PCS book, you will know that it is very different from what you may have thought. Because with the um, ICD-10 PCS, you have to look at the documentation 
and the codes are created. You are creating the codes every single time. If you mess up on one character, you can mess up the whole code. <laughs> so uh, with CPT, these codes are already built. And so you're selecting a code that's already created and it's just on you to make sure that you put the appropriate modifier if it needs one or you know whatever, whatever else you see in the book. So that's something that you have to know that's a, it's a different mindset for each one. But it is possible to work with these and study with these and be able to pass on the first try. I have always recommended to study 20 hours per week and I still recommend that for my nurses anyway. Like I said, no one is immune to study this much, all right? If you wanna pursue this, if you really wanna get out of that bedside, this is, a, this is the way to go. And then when you pass your certification, because I know if you are determined to do this, that you can pass. I don't know you, but I will say that because it's true. I believe that anybody has the capability to be able to study this on their own and be able to pass. And once you get out there in the real world, you wanna look at your, at your resume and you wanna make sure that you are talking about the things that you did that are transferable to coding. I don't wanna know that you can set up a pick line. I don't wanna know that you gave hydration, you did all these things and you changed bandages. I don't wanna know all that. Just tell me about all the things that you did. If you selected from a super bill, let me know that. L write that in your, in your, um, in your resume. And again, you don't have to, to say hundreds of things. You just have to be concise and to the point. What did you do that will translate over to coding? Did you protect patient information? Of course you did because you are a nurse. I don't need to know that you have basic lifesaver skills. I don't care. <laughs> uh, if, if I'm a hiring manager, I am looking at this, at this nurse resume as okay, what are they going to bring me that is going to transfer over to coding? Did you provide education um, in any way? Were you a preceptor? Did you help other nurses, you know, learn about anatomy and things like that? Talk about that. Somebody who's strong in anatomy and medical terminology and pathophysiology, that's great because you see a lot of these job listings ask for those specific skills. Okay, so that's just the thing that you got to know there. But again, it's... For my nurses, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> please be humble when you get into this because it's not easy like you think it is. And there's a lot of people who have mistaken medical coding for, oh, it's so easy. All right. And it's not, you know, you just have to be prepared for it. And the other thing is that's great about nurses coming over is that nurses have a built in relationship already with doctors. And sometimes if you have a brand new coder <laughs> and a nurse brand new coder, they're going to gravitate towards that nurse brand new coder because, hey, we have a built-in relationship. Now, if my people that are not nurses start panicking and think, oh my gosh, I have to be a nurse first. No, you don't. I'm just saying for my nurses that want to do this, I want to encourage them as well um, to want to wanna pursue this. But that's one of the things that doctors will do they they will see you know they will pay attention and coders who are very knowledgeable they're going to see that right away you have to remember doctors spent years to be a doctor so they're going to know somebody who has spent years cultivating their knowledge or somebody who is very knowledgeable they're going to be able to spot that right away so regular coders who have no nursing background can still fall into this category but again, it's, it's going to take a lot of hard work, just like my nurses who have to take that nurse hat off and have to get into the coding mindset. And that's going to be very difficult for them. So I'm just saying that it's, it's a struggle sometimes because you have to kind of like take that hat off like, OK, <laughs> and you can't read into the documentation, even though, you know, there's something that may be missing. That's why they say nurses make great CDIs, clinical documentation integrity experts. That's why they make great CDIs because of that reason. Now, it's not always the greatest thing for them to start off that way because if you have no coding background, you should not be in CDI first before you do coding. That's just my recommendation. That's not an industry standard, um, but I'm saying as a veteran coder, I have seen CDI nurses who struggle because they don't understand coding. And if you want to execute your uh, capabilities fully as a CDI, 
you really have to have a good grasp on that medical coding side first. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm about to run out of time here. But um, if you want to pursue medical billing and coding, look at your options. Don't just pigeonhole yourself into just one association. Um, not that you need to be certified through both because you only need one. What I'm saying is to explore your options and don't just, like, like I said, pigeonhole yourself into one. All right. Look at those. Get one. Start with one. If you need help, if you need a tutor, there's a ton of tutors on LinkedIn. You can um, ask for recommendations there. I am a tutor myself. My rate and contact information is in the description box below. But I will be available after August the 15th, 2023 if you are interested. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.